Ah, hello. Welcome to this Magic of Light program, which of course is all about landscape photography. You might own the best camera in the world, have technique oozing from your fingertips and elsewhere. But when it comes to landscapes and any subject affected by weather, you have to be in the right place at the right time. I've looked through my vast collection of photographs and have selected 10 where light has created the picture. And I will go into some detail as to how they were produced and the circumstances regarding visiting the place in question. So let's get cracking, shall we, at the first image. I have used some of these photographs in other productions. Now here I describe in greater detail the circumstances surrounding each shoot. This shot of the roaches demonstrates the importance of turning up at the right place at the right time. It is vulnerable, yes vulnerable to extreme weather, which the photographer would uncomfortably experience at the wrong time. The secret? That is to understand weather patterns. But first, listen to the weather forecast before leaving home. Camera settings, well, they are largely academic. It was taken, incidentally, with an early pen camera. I don't confine my landscape photography to both ends of the day. Usually, my clients like to judge my work with that bit in the middle. Nevertheless, I acknowledge that early morning and late evening light offer many exciting possibilities. Situations, incidentally, that exist in winter for most of the day. Making the best of a blue sky day, these well-spaced trees contribute attractive patterns in the foreground when shooting into the light. Now, I spot meter highlights to avoid accidental overexposure and then correct shadows in Lightroom. This may not be necessary in winter, as the dynamic range is less than summer. You might think this is an early morning shot. It's not. It is taken at 10.35 a.m. Now, the viewpoint is white moss common, quite rough underfoot in its final stages, so boots essential, and the path tends to be rather overgrown in the summer. The metadata may not make sense. I am using a teleconverter, lighter for the pocket on a rough trek. Obviously, you need a still day for Mr. Linger and a low temperature, as you would expect in late October. A similar scenario at Oswater, with mist lingering as late as five minutes past eleven, but it soon disappeared. The viewpoint is Glencoyne Park, supposedly where Wordsworth discovered those daffodils inspiring one of his most famous poems. You know the one. It's about wandering lonely as a cloud, which I do most of the time anyway. Now the tree provides a useful frame for the misty scene. To achieve the pronounced arc in a rainbow, the sun needs to be low in the sky. Although taken as late as 11.13, it is late October, and Scotland, being a, a little further north than England, does help. The other requirement is, of course, a showery day, interspersed by brief appearances of the sun. Metering a highlight is essential for preserving the colours in the rainbow. You might have to suffer for your art by getting soaking wet. I have cheated. The coach is sheltering me from the icy blast. Much of the foregoing also applies to this second example. Angel rays also need a well-broken sky. If it was raining, there could be a rainbow. 
but behind me because I am looking south towards Exmoor. The prevailing wind is funneled up the Bristol Channel. Understanding what it would do before it does it is the hidden art of landscape photography. Adding techniques to the mix like uh, spot metering is still essential, but success had more to do with understanding weather patterns first. One of the benefits of a visit to Malham Cove in winter is that you have the place to yourself, and late in the day the low light reveals the medieval field patterns. I am standing on the limestone pavement, gingerly looking over the edge, and for my other shots I had the rare experience of photographing the limestone pavement without people. Mind you, climbing over 400 steps to the top might put some people off, especially when night is approaching. Despite my recommendations to spot meter high dynamic images, the E500, which, yes, is pre-micro four-thirds, has done an amazing job on ESP and without exposure bias. Just shows how good these cameras were. I will be using them on auto next and have been made redundant already. So let's finish with the golden hour, and at both ends. Definitely a before breakfast shot. This is December, a couple of days after the shortest, and Santa's visit will be soon. In addition to a windless day, mist has formed during the early hours, and is at its most magical during sunrise. Because the E400 has an optical finder, I use centre-weighted metering instead of spot. I also underexpose by minus 0.7 EV to preserve detail in that brighter sky. The technique of shooting into the sun divides opinion. It becomes a balancing act between competing problems affecting image quality diffraction, and flare. Now this shot should have been taken with a prime lens, not a zoom. As I am using a zoom, I stop down to f16 to avoid flare degrading the image. That brings in its wake another problem, diffraction caused by light having to pass through a very small aperture. I prefer to risk diffraction, because I consider flare to be worse. You can see the settings, so make up your own mind as to whether this shot is successful or not. Similar problems here. In addition to stopping the aperture down, I spot metered the highlight to avoid burnout. Now this will darken shadows, but as I have saved to RAW, then the dark areas can easily be restored in Lightroom. Also, you may consider that the composition works better in portrait orientation.